March 2021 numbers are in. I think we should roll. Let's roll. All right. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Right. You know it's rolling. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela O'Hare, your favorite Las Vegas realtor. And you know what time of the month it is when I have this dude on hey, my channel. Hey, what's up? I'm right? Rob Howe, Rockstar Realtor. I'm the realtor, you're the rock star. Yes. And what are we doing? Every month he comes to my house. We do a video on the market update. We will be going over March 2021 numbers. Yeah. And what? Um, I don't know. That's what we're going to be going over. But first, we kind of just want to actually talk yeah. instead of going into the numbers. We'll get to the numbers. It's very interesting. we got a lot of points to make yes. on this. And we'll try not to go over 30 minutes. Yeah, we'll keep it, we'll keep it low. But how have you been, Ed? I've been good. Yeah. I've been good. So. Oh, look at that. Out. You haven't seen it. I, I got a not. new you tattoo. Just... I did a video on it with me actually going. I'm going to post it. So I try, you kind of can see it. I have the zodiac symbol cancer, which incidentally <laughs> looks like 69. Right. So I got tired of people asking me, why do you have a 69 tattoo? So then I decided to get it covered up with a Grateful Dead butterfly. butterfly. Well, and they did a very good it. job. Yeah, they, she they, did a good job. Did, really, cover-ups are not easy, and you can really go wrong with those. It's a good job. And uh, I, it's too bad you let people influence you that way, Angie. I know. It's not a 69. <laughs> but even my clients were asking, let me see what's on there. Are you, why do you have a 69? I'm like, it's the cancer zodiac It's yin-yang. Yin and yang. I mean, the moons, you know. Ah. But wow. that's one tattoo. I'm doing a video. I'll post it soon. I'm going to be getting another one. I'm not really a tattoo person, but you know what? It's kind of addicting. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you that I've had some of the worst pain from a tattoo I had. But then by the time it was getting finished, for some reason, I was enjoying it. <laughs> was, well, you know what? Like, for me, it's not the pain on? of the tattoo. It's the afterwards, the itching, where it's just like, mm. I just want to rip this thing off my yeah. arm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do recall that too, yeah. <laughs> the itch is awful. So other than that, I have a new assistant that I've been training this week. I am so happy. Good. Yes. You should be. Because I can actually... I know you've been really working hard to find somebody. Yes, and uh, she's awesome. Her name's Kim. So really excited. been training her all week. And next week, I'm going to let her run with the wolves. All right. That's how you have to do it. Yep. Got to so get in there. You? Well, I just been busy. I sold uh, one of my properties, and uh, oh, nice. it was a little. It was one that I owned for fifteen years, so it was uh, something I didn't expect. I mean, well, maybe I could have expected, but the rush of memories about the home and everything that because I did live in it for a while, a long while, and it was just uh, it was emotional, a little yeah. bit more emotional. Fifteen than... years. I've, I haven't lived in a place or owned a place for fifteen. Years. <laughs> right, and well, it, it does help me identify with my clients a little bit more because uh, you know I have had clients that have had emotional attachments to them. Now, I'm always a compassionate person regardless, so I always kind of understood. Right. But now I have that firsthand knowledge and it's, uh, it's yeah, it's, I mean, how a home holds, uh, it has this soul and this memory and right. um, it's, it, it's got a heart and soul. It's not obviously alive, <laughs> but <laughs> it's alive in our minds and yes. it has a lot of uh, memories. Yep. And I just, I had to say, I love you and I, but I've got to see you go. Right. So that's the way that went. Another chapter. Very, very smooth transaction, though. Everything went super well. And all my listings are going super well right that's now. Great. So I have been pretty busy with those, and that's been uh, great. I've got a couple of buyers scratching and clawing to find places right now. <laughs> yeah, that's another story. So we can get into <laughs> the why they're scratching and craw market clawing. Update. So yeah. when we did our last market update, we knew that March was going to be crazy. Right? I mean, we already knew that the numbers for yeah. March were going to be... All the signs were there. All the signs were it there. It was marching. <laughs> yes. So, obviously, we only cover in this video single-family residentials. It, this video, I mean, 30 minutes is already a long time. And if we were to go over condos and townhouses... Yeah. 
We like to talk, but you know. You can assume, know. especially in an up market, that right. condos and townhouses are shooting up as well. Exactly. Yeah. So with that being said, there were 3,726 single family homes that sold last month, which is up 34.7% from February and up 351 from March 2020. Wow. So, remember we just had this conversation about comparing numbers from March 2020 because that's when the whole C words started yeah. transpiring, the lockdown started transpiring mid-March. Yeah. Wow. So, obviously, for the next three months, we're going to see year-over-year numbers, like, huge. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the last year's numbers will be paling in comparison to this year's. Right. Yeah. And then once June hits, it'll be a good indicator to see the difference between numbers because we started picking back up uh, it, it March and March, April and probably May from what I can recall were just, boom, they just, it just came to a halt. Everybody yes. said, I'm not doing anything. And they couldn't. Right. They were a lot I of had people one couldn't. closing in April. I think that was it. I mean, I think I had some things that were, yeah, I had some stuff still moving, but as far as, you know, the brakes were just put on the whole market. <laughs> so I, we're going to have three or four months. So that showing up, in the numbers but still nonetheless we had a smasher of a march not a surprise and one of those reasons is because you have the, your typical seasonal sellers that come out they know this is the great time to sell so they were all planning to put their property on the market and guess what happened it sold like in a hot second yeah so february sellers sold in march in the hot second yep. just boom exactly it was cray cray i have a feeling though and i i know i say this i base it off of what I'm experiencing, I have a feeling even though April is going to be good, but I don't think it was going to be as good as this March. As robust. Yeah, yeah as March robust. was just a, a really, really, I think if when we look back, I'm almost positive when we look back, March will be the peak. Right. And, uh, you know, usually a lot of times in the summertime, we're going to, we see more peaking, but I think this year we're going to see more peaking, uh, that, that be the peak in March. Well, uh, I mean, it doesn't mean it's not going to be still right. really strong. Right. And it's there's just, reasons behind it. And once yeah. we go over the numbers, we'll go over what my opinion is yeah. as to why um, it's not going to be as robust as from here on out as March. Yeah, you might see a little bit of relief. I'm already starting to see that fringe little bit happening. Yeah. Just, just a little bit. Yes, and we'll go over why. But... Drum roll on this one, Rob. <laughs> the medium sales price went from three hundred fifty-five thousand in February to three hundred and sixty-three thousand in March. Well, <laughs> that's which is eight thousand dollars more. Yes, but it's up two point three percent from February. And then up 13.8% from the prior year. So nearly 14%. And that really is based off of pre-C word stuff that was happening. Because even though, you know, those closings that were happening last year in March, right. um, they were still, un we were blissfully unaware. Yes, still. exactly. Yeah, until mid-March when the S hit the fan. Yeah. S-H-I-T hit yeah. the fan. Yeah, <laughs> the shit hit the fan. Say it. It was real shit. <laughs> I'm just telling you. <laughs> so, you know, I have a lot of clients commenting, you know, she's a bearer. She's being aggressive, telling you to sell. And, you know, we're always going to tell you to sell. I mean, the proof is in the numbers. It's still a good time to sell. We mm -hmm. can't predict what the next few months are going to entail. The next few months could be just as crazy as it is now. But we always go by known factors. We know now is still an excellent time to make money. Some yeah. people are holding off and they're waiting for another couple months maybe to get more money off the sale of their home. But so that much would, can happen. No, that would be a ridiculous thought in my mind. What I know is right now there is there there's frenzies happening for your property. At least there have been, and uh, I can tell you that if you're in a if you no matter what if you have a modern home if you have a home that is updated. basically updated low in t type of inventory home on the market like a horse property or something. I mean a number of different things that that can make your home very special will make your home hot 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 right now. Now, if you're out there trying to sell your home that hasn't been updated <laughs> and you want the highest dollar for it, for you know, you're still going to do well, right? But you, they're within some reasoning, and I'm starting to see buyers be picky enough to say, 
you know, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to peel off the appraisal contingency and, and, you know, or pe peel off, you know, tons of cash to make a, it happen with a home right. that doesn't have some special qualities. Exactly. Which brings us actually to the luxury market. And I think this is the first time since we've been doing the market update that I've seen so many sales in the luxury market. There were 159 a million and up homes that sold last month yeah. compared to the month before, which was 95. That's a 64 home increase. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot to have happened in for in that market, in the luxury market. Yeah, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen 159. I mean, 159 in a year, maybe not. <laughs> and Summerlin, like, you know, but right. out of across the valley, 159 in one month was a lot. Um, however, the median price did dip in the luxury market it went from 1.56 mil to 1.448880 um, which is a hundred eleven thousand dollar difference uh, or decrease well what and, and and we know that's because we're pro it's not being skewed maybe by like a really really those multi-million dollar home that pulls it up a little bit right because the median know. price takes you know it helps adjust that skew uh, when i looked at the average it was like at 1.7 Right. million but okay. the medium gotcha. price because there was only a couple multi-million dollar homes the bulk of them were in the million dollar range well it also tells me that maybe the you know the, the sellers are in that market are happy to get what they're getting right because a year or two ago they weren't getting that and some of these homes i can tell you in this market in the luxury market there the, some of these homes they come they they've tried to sell some of these homes multiple times over the last couple of years right they've tried different agents they've tried you know but all along it really came down to price i mean it almost always does but now they're finally at a threshold where they can get their price and sell those homes <laughs> or at least close enough to it and so they're doing it yeah yeah you know? So kudos to those luxury people. Yeah. So now that brings us to new listings. And we had 3,566 new listings in March, which is actually up 18.2% from February, but actually down 1.1% from prior year, which is kind of interesting that we're down a percent from last year, 2020. Well, only only a percent, but it also reflects that uh, there was the breaks were hit right there. Sure. So there just isn't... A ton of people coming out and putting their but there are more i have been noticing more uh, of course because i think this time of year is just a little bit more yeah it's our traditional spring selling season but n not nearly for the demand no not nearly for the demand and i'm going to tell you there the demand that's actually there <laughs> is sidelined a lot of people have sidelined themselves they've they, i mean i've i've got anytime i get a listing that's a little bit, you know, around 300 or so. I get so many people going, hey, you got any more of those? You know, because right. uh, that those things, they're just not enough of, uh, of the, the well, the, let's just say lower priced uh, list homes, homes right. out there. Um, and so a lot of those people, and including as you go up a little, uh, as you go up higher, they've decided to sideline themselves. They're in positions where they don't have to do it. They'd like to but they're going to see what happens. Right, and which brings us to when I said in the beginning we were going to talk about why I feel or we feel that April may, in my opinion, may not be as robust as March is because the people, I mean, yes, people need to move, but a lot of them are like, you know what, this market's crazy. I don't want to get right. into the bidding war. I don't want to um, waive any of the contingencies. You know, I don't want to have to overpay for a home. Yeah. I'm going to wait until the market crashes. Well, they're making a, a rational assessment, in my opinion. Yes. Um, which, if they, if I don't have to do this, why should I go in there and mix it up and 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 force something? Right. So if somebody is in that position, don't you know? Maybe you don't have to do that. Um, it, but there are so many that still have to that it hasn't really made much of a dent, right? Right. So. Well, you know, the thing is, is that. Unfortunately, if you're looking to relocate here to Vegas, and I work with 90% of my clients are from out of state, and when they tell me their budget's 300 or 350, I don't mean, I mean, I kind of laugh, but to myself, and I don't mean to, but good luck. Because if you find something in that price range, it's going to be in a not so good area, kind of, right? I mean, you won't have that many options to choose from. Yeah, you just don't have as many options. And I, th I think what um, what I when I 
what I would read into what you're saying, it's not just that somebody comes to you and says, I want to buy in this price range. It's that they want a four bedroom, one story with a pool, right. modern, da 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 and, and, I, and, 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 and I've got 300000 Single and it's, story. <laughs> and it's like, ooh, I've got some bad news for you, you know? Yeah, you're right. Exactly. They're looking for more specific single story with a pool under 300 and right. I'm like, uh. Yeah, that's where it's like, you know, no. I, we're the bearer of bad news sometimes. Uh, and, and that's okay. I mean, we have to, we have to be real with people. And, um, of course we have to be real with ourselves and what we can, uh, it, when it, things are this busy, we have to be smart with our time as well right. so that we can help everybody that we actually can help. Now, if it ultimately turns out that we know that we've got somebody that's going to sit there and spin their wheels and you're going to spin them with them, that's, those are tough times. So you want to be honest with people. You want to be straightforward. This is what we're going to deal with. If they can handle that, Right. Uh, then and many many can so this isn't like you know I don't know we we don't want to make judgments right out the gate that's for sure yeah definitely <clears throat> and I think um, initially I was saying that um, you know just wait till June this is what I was telling everybody let's right. wait till June when the yeah. forbearance is ending however <laughs> Biden is gonna try to pass a what a bill uh, or yeah. a law or whatever yeah. to extend it to the end of this year. The, the, are you talking more the moratorium forbearance. or the forbearance? forbearance? Okay. So what that means now is I was praying that this would happen in June. Everyone needed to get caught up or whatever. But so what that means pretty much the rest of this year is going to be very anemic because if they don't have to make a mortgage payment, they don't have to sell their home. Why should they? Right, right. People aren't being forced into a situation of foreclosure or sell your home. Right. And of course, if you've got equity, you're selling your home, especially a lot of equity. Right. You're going to say, all right, I got I to gotta bail out and at least I get something. Um, I, that is part of it for sure. Uh, the moratorium is also a part of it. Um, well, for sh well, from what I understand, our governor, Sisolak, had said May 31st is it final. I'm not extending the eviction moratorium. Right. But we're talking about forbearance now. Well, and then you have the federal moratorium as well. So Right. But, I mean, would they would have to go through the process to try yeah, to evict them. You're supposed to go through a process in, here, too. I mean, it's these are all components of the reasons why things are, are, ha are happening. Right. But so my thought was, I've been telling my clients, let's wait till June. Just, you know, wait a couple of months. And I'm not the pressure type person where, right. like, let's go. Let's go buy. You need to buy now. You know what? I'm telling my clients, don't buy. I'm just honest. You know, some of them, oh, I'm yeah. like, you know what? It's not worth getting into these bidding wars, bidding over, and like I said, um, the contingencies. Yeah, I, I, I like to, I mean, I like to be honest as well with somebody if I feel I want to give them my opinion uh, right. of what of the uh, best assessment, I should say, of their situation. Sometimes I, I know, and a lot, I've been fortunate that I have people that want to take advantage of the selling side and then buy. So in their situation, they've got right. so much equity and they just want to improve their position and ultimately they're 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 gonna be in a great situation even with the crazy market. So in those cases. Well that makes right? sense. And I totally get it. Yeah. So I mean the, uh, obviously there's always different factors. Yeah, there's in always play. always different factors. But as you can see, even us talking about all this, there's a lot of activity and a lot of reasons for people to still be purchasing and still be selling and uh, so, uh, you know, while we're, while I'm seeing some of that fringe sideline, sidelining happen, the interest rate going up just a little bit. Right. I mean, that interest rate, as it goes up, um, you know, it's up over three now for most people. Yeah. And, uh, as that goes up, it kicks people out. So you don't yeah. have just people that decide to sideline. They actually get sidelined. Right. They're yeah. not in, they're not able to really just not able to afford it. Yeah. You know? So that's why I think um, even though our market is still anemic and we still have the buyers, the influx of buyers, these buyers are very smart and savvy and don't want to play the games. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. And uh, you, you've got to assess because, you you know, being smart, you would still know it, your situation and what that right. means to you to get into a new home. Exactly. When it's a prime, one thing that's really moving so much is that so many of these purchasers are primary residents yes they're not they're not uh investors and those people have are willing their threshold is going to be higher because it's their home and they're trying to get themselves into a comfortable position in life and what does that mean what does that cost you how much is that val value to you right so that's that's a much different 
True. And if you if you do sideline and we're still anemic and the prices are still going up, then it just... Well, and look, unfortunately, <laughs> I, I, I wish I could have told people. I wish I could have really looked into my crystal <laughs> right? ball. And Last you know, year. I'm pretty good at seeing some things coming, but this one, I could not, you know, I could not... I wish I could have told people, buy now yeah. in 2020. Like, yeah. I mean, do it. I know it's, it seems crazy. Right. A lot of my clients were waiting. They're, everyone yeah. thought it was going to crash. Well, I never thought crash, but I certainly thought settle down. Right. You know? I thought the prices... Well, because remember when we did our very first... Started doing our very first market updates. Right. Our prediction at that time was that if anything crashes, not really crashes, we would just see a slight decrease as the, all the momentum we gained, we would see that go back. Yeah. To so where maybe it was. reverse to a buyer's market by this time. We thought, right. we did think that by this time it might start to reverse. Um, it, but, you know, a, nut, a lot of these factors haven't reversed yet, as right. you pointed out, you know, so we're we're, we're we're stuck in this situation that it's a cycle it's a never ending cycle I yeah think. well and it it's just very interesting i'm going to tell you i think once this time is gone i mean it's gone we'll uh, hopefully never deal with anything like right. this again and i say deal with it because it's like there's some there, it sounds like i'm saying negative but there's some really great things about it of course our yes. careers have been great our uh, workflow has been great but, um, you know, for some people, it's been very uncomfortable and not exciting. And that, and, and it's gotten to the point where, you know, I have had some a agents finally starting to complain about these things and that this or that and the other thing. It's like, well, you know, our economy is picking back up. Uh, the vaccines open to everyone here in Nevada, not yeah. just certain age groups, anyone 18 and over, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then. So. Yeah. Some of the casinos are now um, having their workers get the vaccine. So, I mean, I think, and then I've seen a lot of posts or YouTube videos where the strip is like gone super crazy and super it's busy. It's been very busy, yeah. Um, so, I mean, we're picking up, the economy's picking back up. Um, so, and ultimately, if we continue with the anemic market and you're a buyer, actually now would be a better time to buy just because then it'll just continue to rise in price. Right. Well, and, and I think... Uh... If there was a cautionary tale here, it's it's well, what's the interest rate going to do? Right. So very true. As it, in general, generally speaking, the interest rate goes up in a good economy. Generally speaking, so you could see that happen. And uh, the I I mean the basic idea is that the people can afford more. I'm not. I've said this before, but I don't. I'm not um, exactly a, uh, a sure how the interest rate does what it does it's a right. little magical <laughs> i mean some of it i understand it's it's tied to the bond market but, right that's so uh, confusing it is it is um it is something that uh, you know is a little bit of a question mark but uh that's why we caution you on what we do know right. and what we're kind of seeing and already it we we said it interest rate was gonna rise yeah we said it. and by third, boom second quarter second quarter yeah. boom right on time I mean, I, I'd hate to tell you we were right. It was before. Right. It was a little before. Yeah. Yeah, just before. It, did, yeah. it actually did start rising just before the second quarter. Yeah. But regardless, it rose early is what we would call it. Right. And, you know, but we'll get back into the numbers real quick. But I just want to bring up a point is that if you're able to right now and you're ready to buy, I mean, obviously, we're here to help you out. And if you understand how the market's going about waiving some of the contingencies and maybe going over asking price and all that, then go for it. Because like, like I just said, we don't know how high this price right. is going to continue, especially with interest rates on the right. rise. Absolutely. To surmise all of that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there were a total of um, 1,722 single family homes listed without offers in the month of March, which is actually up 5.7% from the February, but down 68.8% from March 2020. Because March 2020, we probably had about 6,000 maybe listings without offer, six or 7,000, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's more, it was a more, certainly a more traditional time. Right. We had, uh, we had all the traditional expectations. We were like, oh, <laughs> everything's going to be, oh, whoops. So as we've always been saying, we're very anemic and our months of supply went from 0.6 months to 0.5 months mm. in March. <laughs> in wow. March. So that is um, 
down 21.5% from February and down 76.9% from March 2020. That's so that's that's 77%. That's huge. <laughs> There's the story, folks. So that means that we were probably, what, 7.1, 7. 7 point something. I mean, sorry, 7. 2.1 months of supply last year. Yeah, at least. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> this is this is the story. Yeah. There it is. I mean. 0. 0.5 months of supply. And to top it all off, 74% of the homes were on the market for 30 days or less. Which the month before that number was sixty six point seven. That's a big jump. Yeah, and then in uh, March twenty twenty, it was fifty nine percent. So seventy four percent of the homes went like that. I mean, if, that's a really big jump for for that short of a period of time. I mean, yeah. for that particular stat, that's a big jump, which just exactly says. I mean, and it just it, for for me, it was everything that all my listings reflected, which was. Multiple offers and yes. just boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Everything. I mean, all every nothing was lasted more than a weekend. So for me, I don't know. It kind of kills me. I guess because I don't have many listings. I'm gonna have a listing soon, but I don't understand it. Like some of these agents will list it on Thursday, mm -hmm. and then they'll say seller will be making final decision by Monday. Okay. I mean, in a normal market, I would have done that just to see if I got any more offers. But why, after getting fifty offers, a hundred offers, it's I mean, it's it's happening. Why would you let it go to that many offers? Well, I think it's good to set an expect expectation, and and that is a traditional thing to do is to to, to just give it a weekend at least. Traditional. Yeah. But for me, and my sellers agree, if we get like a super stellar offer and it's cash and yada yada. We're not going to wait for the whole so, weekend. So you, yeah, and I mean, just just technically speaking, I don't think you have to follow what you even put in there. If you happen to get a better offer, you can go in there and change that information and say, "Hey, we're closing right. up shop." But I'm just saying, why? Because you're a listing agent, right? And you hear on the news how many offers this one house got and how many offers that one house got. Why do you let it go so much? Well, I, I, I. I I ba I did a similar type thing, but I didn't put a date of hey we're gonna respond by right. Monday. I didn't say you know we're stacking offers and then we'll we'll respond by Monday. But once I knew I was getting multiple offers each and every time, it would then put out multiple offers, and that lets and, you know we're 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 high, we're already asking for highest and best. Right. That is to me a more appropriate way of doing it because now you're still letting people get in, but you you're also letting them know you can't play around. Right. So you got a chance, but you better not play around. And, you know, it, multiple offers could mean two. True. I mean, that's all yeah. it takes but to I'm, be multiple I, You know, offers. you read in the newspaper and a lot of my clients say, oh, this person in California, they had 20 offers or 30 mm -hmm. offers or 50, yada, yada. For me, if I was a listing agent, and yes, you're trying to get the best deal from your yeah for your seller however i just don't, i think that's excessive well to me it's it, it's it's kind of in the on the line i don't i it's probably unnecessary to give it more time than it needs but at the same time some people don't have and it, and just depending on what kind of property i mean they don't have maybe they can't get out on thursday maybe right. they can't get out on friday they can't get out till saturday and then they write their offer and it's on your desktop on sunday right so you're, you are giving people a little bit more of a chance to get in and really get, take their best swings. Now, you're going to have the people. Those first bunch of offers that come in are all people that are waiting, like I like to say, like a spider in the web. <laughs> you know. And as soon as it comes in, whap, I'm throwing my offer in. Right. You know. I mean, I had offers put in when they're like, we're going to go see it, but here's an offer. That's yeah. what they would do. Yeah. We're going to go see it, a but I already sent you an made offer. offers before seeing. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean... I, it's. I don't think it's the worst tactic in the world. It's, it's as long as somebody's setting expectations and not, you know, uh, uh, intentionally stacking offers. But right. I, to be totally honest, I didn't have fifty offers on anything. I had seventeen offers on one. Right. But um, but most, as an agent, that's very hard to keep track of it everything is. too, because you have to be very meticulous. Yeah. And and write everything down in a log and. It gets stressful. It yeah. certainly gets stressful, and you know you've got every everybody and their and their mother wants to know what's, what's going, going on, on, right? So right. you've got to respond to everybody, and um, and you know so you have to have a a, a nice coordinated way of dealing with that. Right. 
Yeah, nah. a good system in place. But I, I mean, I it's this type of thing was not unfamiliar to me because th through the years there have been times where we had really spikes and a lot of multiple 2018 offers. Twenty eighteen was one of yeah. those years. So I mean, to me, I I think I I definitely saw more of an interesting frenzy. What, what but some of it made it easier just because the buyers' expectations were they they knew what was happening. Right. So they knew, True. throw it in, see what happens. Uh, some of them just, you know, it's, there are times where you get people freaking out. Why aren't you, or, I gave you a great offer. Why aren't you, well, they didn't, their expectations are not correct. They think that you need to, you know, well, maybe you didn't give us a great offer. That's probably the deal. You think you did, but you didn't. <laughs> the offers we got were right. much better. Right. And that, that, you know. Exactly. So Especially it, if you're offering at asking price and no other stipulations, right. you can forget that your offer is going to yeah, be uh, pushed to the side. Totally. And, 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 uh, and that is, I call it the, um, the evolution of a buyer, you know, <laughs> because the, you know, they start out and they don't really know. And everything that you tell them, they take with a grain of salt. Right. <laughs> I don't believe you. Yeah. And I understand that. You just met me or maybe we haven't worked very much together. Or even if you know me for a while, you're just like, ah, oh, realtors. You know, yeah. even though it's Rob, I'm still, he's a realtor. I understand what his, his objective is. But I, I also understand that you might think that way. So I try to feed the information slowly. But that's an evolution with that buyer within them that they need to start understanding and then seeing what. And then trusting you and then right. saying, oh, wow, this is what is happening. They got experience the first time and realize, yes. Yeah, they get believe, thumped on the head. Believe nope. what your realtor's telling yeah. you. <laughs> your offer sucks. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, well, oh. listen to Angela the next time. <laughs> right. Then they evolute. And then all of a sudden, when they, all of a sudden, when they've missed, the, missed on three, they're just like, I'm going all in, man. Right. I'm just not, uh-uh. You know, right. I don't know. You've probably not played much poker, but I play a little poker, and that's what it reminds me. <laughs> you know, somebody just kind of get... I play video <laughs> poker. Somebody it's not get, the same thing. <laughs> no, but you're getting hammered at the table, and you just keep making... And then finally, you just go, I'm going to... I'm just going to muscle, or I'm going to muscle my stack and see right, what happens. Right. You know, not necessarily a smart move at the poker table. But, right. Yeah. I, I get it. <laughs> Um, you know, I know we always like to over about 36 minutes. We'll see how much I can chop this Edit up. Edit this thing down. Edit Edge. this thing down. <laughs> no, I think it's fun to just talk openly about what's going on with the market. You know, True. we're very honest people and, and, you know, we're going to tell it like it is. At least I like to tell it like it is. I, I don't like to sugarcoat anything. Well, I like to tell it like it is. <laughs> I have to sugarcoat it a I little. Have, I have my way with the words, you know. <laughs> But yes. I ultimately, I can I know, learn a lot from Rob. <laughs> <laughs> ultimately, it is important to to really, it is important to tell it like it is at some point right. in time. I mean, you just you gotta you gotta know when to lay it down and say, well, listen, I want to get this done or not? Because right. we're gonna have trouble if we keep going about at this way, whatever right. scenario that is. I just real quick wanted to bring up new construction. You know. The new construction route is filling a pinch, and a lot of these builders um, are only releasing a couple at a time, like we've said before in the past, but some of them aren't even releasing lots until May. Because, you know, what's going on with lumber? Lumber has gone up. There's a shortage in lumber. There's a shortage in supplies. Could you imagine across the country, everyone building new construction? Yeah. They're, they can't build them fast enough, and for those reasons. Exactly. So if you are thinking about buying new construction, you're going to have to expect some delays. And another food for thought on that is if you are financing new construction um, and your house is going to be done in six to seven, six to ten months, where are the interest rates going to be then? Mm -hmm. Well, I think a lot of people that are getting new construction now, I don't think they're thinking about what's going to be future the, interest rates. The change that could happen because they... You know, and some people think, well, I can lock it in. Well, and, and it, your lender can't do it until a well, certain 16 point. days usually before yeah. it's done being built. And lock-in rates are not cheap. No, you so, have to buy down the points. Yeah, so it is something to take into consideration, um, I think, for sure. Funny enough, I think the builders have been trying to pump their brakes in the in the ways that they can. I mean, I've got a client right now. This sounds silly, but, you know, one of the lenders or one of the builders requires you to a prequal with their lender. Oh, almost all of them now. Yeah, so they want to make sure their own people check you out. But then you go to try to reach out to them and you can't get a hold of them. You can't. They don't call you back for a week, you know. 
so they're pumping the brakes. They're they're doing. They have their little ways of saying, uh, eh, you know. Well, and another thing too, like I sold a Toll Brothers that closes this month, but it was a standing inventory home. Okay. It was Pretty a standing rare. inventory. That's really Toll rare. Brothers and Regency. They did have a few they advertised. Yeah, I remember and Regency. That. So they told us 45 to 60 day closing because of how behind uh, you have to get pre-approved by the, the TBI lender, the Toll Brothers lender, and also use their title company. There's only one title company for all the homes that are selling by Toll hmm. Brothers. So they told me a 45 to 60 day closing on a standing inventory home that generally takes 30 days yeah. to close, Yeah, which is kind of it's it's crazy well and just so everybody's aware this is a good piece of information you don't have to use a builder's lender no as a matter of fact they can't force you to do that they can have you prequal pre with one and the prequal is simple they just probably run your credit and don't really do much right. however there are still builders out there taylor morrison and woodside for a fact Offer incentives if you use their in-house lender. They they usually, yeah, they haven't pulled that away because they know that's a benefit to them. But KB, Toll Brothers, Lennar, they don't. They haven't. Mm -mm. And another thing is that, um, you know, a lot of videos I've stated bring your realtor. So now <laughs> Lennar has changed their way of um, doing things and they no longer have agents at the new home sites where they have a kind of like open door yep. where you have to use an app to go look at the homes. And we so, don't mention open door. Yeah, here. but I don't even see them anymore. But when I get you, the letters. When you um, <laughs> want to go look at houses, you're not going to be talking to anybody. So you're not going to have information on yep. when the lot's going to be released. You got to dig it up. I've had to deal with that. With yeah, Lamar. but the thing is yep. now too is that if they go and sign up with their phone or and get the app and do it, then it's pretty much... Oh, if they do it themselves. Yeah. Because yeah. I used to say put in a fake get... name, but you can't because there's no agent to put a fake name. You have to use an app or phone number. You're supposed to be assigned an agent there, but, uh, you know, those yeah. agents are so busy that they don't even, yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes they'll just give you the link to just use the keypad to key in the, yep. the numbers to go in. Mm -hmm. There, there will be things that they're doing now that they will not continue to do in time. I've seen this before. Yes. Um, builders can get uh, a little ahead of themselves. <laughs> and then one day they're all begging for things to change because right. they're not getting as much business. So right now. Take care of those good world. agents. Yeah. And right now it's their world. Yeah. They, they live in it. That's fine. Yeah. It's not bad for us either. No. Anyway, I just wanted to bring up the new construction, just food for thought on if you're financing, um, expect the interest rates to go up. Yeah, P keep an eye on that. That's a very, very astute um, observation. And I do I do think that is something that we have to pay attention to. Yeah. It is it is probably the single biggest thing that might put the brakes on our market and start uh, evening out some things. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Um, oh, one thing I was going to say, there's, so there's, I, you know, I work with a lot of new construction and so you get to figure who does what, um, but KB is the one that puts your name in the lottery. So if you're interested in a community and a, and a home, you put your name in a lottery. Once they release the list, they do a drawing and they pick your name virtually. You don't have to be there. They'll do like a FaceTime or Loom mm -hmm. or something and announce that you're the winner of whatever lot. Say they only release four lots. And they've been releasing four every couple of weeks. Right. And then with um, Toll Brothers, they'll just put your, or with Taylor Morrison, they'll put your name on the interest list. And they're going to be calling the people that were interested first right. and then work their way down the list. So I like that, that they, the yeah. Taylor Morrison's doing Pol that. That's very um, fair. D.R. Horton's doing the same thing. Yeah. But Pulte. Sorry, I almost said Pulte, yes. but they're not doing Pulte, that. Pulte, you're on an interest list in a way. So, for example, if you're interested in a park lane, single-story home in a community, then they're going to send out the next lot release and how much their lots are. And if you're interested on bidding on, on the that lot. lot. So you now, bid on the lot premium. Pulte at Carmel Cliff, their lot premiums are over 100000 Pulte at Pinewood, they were starting out in the 30s. Now... My clients got an offer seven like seventy five thousand, and it's the small lots. So Pulte is like our, our you know highway robbery when it comes to it lot sounds premiums. like lots costs yeah. lots. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> what else have I experienced? Um, communities. 
Well, this is all in, a lot of this is in Summerlin too. Summerlin's yeah. Yeah. The, the the I mean it's just no, but Pinewood's over in Sky Canyon. Well, and that's right next to Summerlin. And if right. you're if you're gonna have something that's almost like Summerlin, I <laughs> Sky love Sky Canyon's Canyon. pretty good, right? Yeah. So I'm just you know speaking from experience, little things that I've uh, observed in the last few months. I just wanted to bring up. Yeah. Hey, we had a lot in this video. And she's going to have a fun time editing it down and hopefully giving you the very best because there was some really good stuff in this video. Yes, those good nuggets in here. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you like this video, you know what to do, right? Hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think of the real estate market. Do you think it's going to continue this way this year? Um, and most importantly, share not to with share, a friend. Yeah. but what? Smash, Smash that subscribe, the subscribe button. button. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Rock on. And do it peacefully. And, and we'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next one. Month. Next one month. Yeah.